G'day everyone, I'm Matt, and today I'm here to unbox the brand new Creality CR6 SE. Uh, first, potentially the first one that's been seen here in Australia, uh, or potentially the first unboxing, I'm not sure. But uh, this one has been kindly lent to me by the team at uh, Aura Run here in uh, Melbourne in Australia. They are a 3D print manufacturer, 3D printer manufacturer, and a 3D filament manufacturer. Um, based right here in Australia, so support Aussie. Um, this particular box, as you can kind of see, has uh, arrived in interesting condition. Uh, interesting in that when the kangaroos who uh, do our deliveries here in Australia, it's correctly pointed out on the Facebook forums, they pop it in their pouch and sometimes they get a little exuberant and uh, they bounce a touch too high and uh, they land and, and things get a little shook up. And uh, it's also potentially possible that when the, uh, the koalas are bringing it up to your front door and they, uh, they come up the steps, sometimes they trip over. They've only got very little legs uh, and it's a long step up, you know, so potentially it might have happened then. But uh, irrespective, hopefully when we cut it open for the first time, you'll see that uh, in, uh, it's relatively well packed in my experience. Creality do uh, a good job of their, their packaging the internals. So hopefully when we open up, it is in, uh, in good working condition. So without further ado, let's uh, get on with the unboxing and see what's inside the box. So here's my scalpel that I prepared earlier. I'm going to be surgical about these things, apparently. Um, and let's cut the tape open and see what we can see inside the box. So again, it was slightly damaged and dropped. It's, it's certainly been through, well, let's not say the wars, but it's certainly been through uh, possibly some interesting times on its way here. I always like that sound, very satisfying. Uh, and as I kind of expected, the, um, the box inside uh, has this foam. It's like a, it's a really rigid hard foam. And uh, I reckon that's what's going to have saved what is inside this box from having any, uh, any damage. So, uh, first thing, uh, a traditional 3D uh, printer user manual. So, uh, again, in my experience, Creality create really good, easy to follow um, user manuals um, that walk you through step by step how to get to the very end. They, they don't guide you through to how to print, but everything to the point of getting printed, um, that's usually found in there. Um, and very easy to follow and read. After sales service card, you have the external touch screen, a bag with some, uh, look to be M5, maybe by 40 mil screws, a thumb screw and something else. Uh, the carry, the all important carry handle, which goes on the top, because this one is portable apparently. Uh, power supply, uh, which uh, has an Australian power plug with it, uh, very good to see. Not having those pesky adapters. <laughs> the uh, filament reel holder with the swivel. So this is actually a really clever idea for. Uh, getting that swivel out of the way. It doesn't necessarily see, need to sit across the top of the gantry like you see on a lot of printers. Uh, and it actually sits off the back, which is pretty cool. Um, this looks like a box of filament. It's a box of filament. Uh, Creoli PLA white 1.75 millimeter, one kilo. It comes with it. So many other manufacturers could learn from this. Seriously, you pull the thing open, you, you get the box, you're all excited. And if you didn't order filament, um, you've got a box with a really cool print inside it and you can't do anything with it. Other manufacturers, take note, put some filament in the box. Even if it's a little bit, just put something in the box so that at least we can test our prints. Oh, there's another little bit in here. That's the other part of the, the reel. And so far, so good. This is, um, the packaging seems to have held up really well. Uh, it's certainly, uh, it's not showing any signs of being squashed or squished. Again, squished, don't know if it's a word, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, so the gantry. Uh, nice. Uh, really good, solid looking piece of kit. 
uh, four screws in the bottom. I put these at uh, 20 by 40 um, and a 20 by 20 on the top. And that's like that's solid. That's a really solid piece of kit. Uh, that surprises me. But anyway, it looks really nice. It looks really solid. Uh, so looking forward to putting that together. Uh, but the all important bit, did the glass bed survive? And uh, the answer to that, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely it did. It's 100% uh, intact. Uh, so big kudos to the team at Creality who created the packaging for this thing. Um, it's done its job. Um, sure, look, I mean, it could have been wet. It could have been uh, dropped more. Who knows? But uh, the end result is that I've ended up with a printer here today that even though the, the exterior packaging is wrecked, uh, what's inside of it, which is what really matters, people, it's what's on the inside, um, is perfect. So uh, let's... Get rid of that. Just make sure there's nothing else sitting in the box. There is not. Get rid of the box. I'll trip over that later on. Uh, and let's uh, oh, look at adjustments. Nice. Um, let's get putting this together and uh, let's let's get our first print going. All right. Well, I did uh, fail to mention before, it has this awesome little tray here on the side. And inside this tray, we're going to find all the bits that we need to put this one together. So, let's have a look and see. We've got a removal tool, mini spatula, I guess, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, we've got some stickers. We have a, oh, we've got our first casualty. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. We've got a cleaning pin, which is uh, <laughs> got a little bit of a, uh, a bend in it. That's okay. I doubt that happened during shipping, but anyway, let's go with it. Uh, we have a spanner, which is a 10 and an 8 mil open end spanner. The obligatory, but somewhat shrunken, uh, psychos uh, with, a, with a lock on them, which is kind of cool, I guess. Very small though compared to the original ones, which these, not these, these, much better. Anyway, each their own. Uh, comes with those. <clears throat> An assortment of Allen keys, which no doubt we'll need to put everything together. Uh, a USB uh, SD card. A uh, USB key. Okay. Oh, for inserting the SD card into. I want to just put the SD card reader in it anyway. Um, we have a an assortment here of a couple of spare nozzles, maybe a couple of different sizes, or maybe just point fours. Um, some locking parts for the Bowden tube, and some spare T nuts, uh, T nuts, and again some M5 screws. And then finally, this one I'm kind of interested in. Looks like it might be to um, remove and refit the uh, nozzle in the hot end. And if that's the case, that's a really cool little tool. And all of that was contained inside this awesome little tray, which of course slides under the front. So that's that's pretty cool. Kudos for that using in space. So I could have quite easily just left that as blank space or nothing in there. Um, to have a, a cool little storage tray is a, is a good one. Let's put this sucker together and see how it all, how it all comes together. We'll follow the instruction manual. Uh, or the destruction manual, the uh, RTFM as my wife calls it. Uh, I'm not very good at that. So the first thing we've got to do is it says install the gantry frame. So uh, let's have a look. Should we put this on the side of this? No, we shall not. Uh, let's grab the screws because we're definitely going to need those. So these were an M5 by 45 screw. Going to need four of those, and the first one, yeah. Right. So, the gantry, 
make sure it's facing hopefully the right way. And this really should only go together one way. We'll get that one later. <laughs> and that was a rookie mistake, that one. So, let's get the first screw in. So a little tip for when you're doing this for the first time, let's start them by hand if you can. Uh, that way, there's less chance you're going to strip them uh, by putting them in at the wrong angle. So just get them in, get them, uh, not even finger tight to be honest, just, just get them in so that they've got a, a start and uh, then start to use something mechanical to put them in. Uh, and if you feel them binding up, just stop, go back out, uh, take the, the gantry off and uh, start again. Um, you know, you can, you can put these screws in without having to put them on. You can uh, put them put them into the uh, into this part without this part here and make sure that the thread's in the right place, etc. And by doing so, uh, you will hopefully not damage the threads inside and it'll all bolt together the way Creality need for it to. Just having a little moment here. Yeah, didn't think I hit it. Instead of trying to do it for the camera, I might do it for myself. Started. <laughs> I didn't want to start. Oh, no, that one feels like it started. It has. And uh, we'll just cut away for a moment while I'm going to get the other screw. realized I called it a screw. It's not a screw, it's a bolt. There is a difference between a screw and a bolt. Now, it feels like it might have started, but uh, yeah, it's just a tight one. So we'll get these tightened up. So first step was install the gantry, twist the coupling to raise the x-axis to the position as shown in the picture. So in this case we need to bring the x-axis down. Uh, x-axis bottom profile. All right. side now. Try not to rest that on the cables. So we're just doing those up to the point where they feel nice and nice and tight. Um, there's probably a torque setting you can put those to but and that's step one done. Alright, so step two, install the display. After the display is installed, please connect the display cable. Alright, well, let's find the display first. Here's our display. And it says we need two screws. So I'm going to go, there's two T hex nuts, T, T nuts, T bolts, no, T hex nuts. Um, and there's four, four bolts in here. So it's probably going to be two of these. I can't see anything else. It looks like it's probably going to fit anywhere. And I'll pick that up later as well. 
Uh, so it looks like this is going to bolt on the end here. So I'm going to have to spin it around so I can see it. And that's going to bolt onto the end here. This is only uh, four screw holes, and you can only use two of them. Oh, my fat little fingers, fat little sausages, are not going to let me do that. And I'm going to leave the next size down. What is infuriating me? I don't know why the biscuits are the same size all the way through. Alright. So again, just taking it slowly, making sure we hit the thread. And without forcing it. I'm not having a lot of luck with this one at all. It does not feel good. It's okay, it was just the nut behind the wheel, which in this case was me. Uh, one in, and second one in. Ooh, step two, I'm just going to flick back and see and make sure there was nothing. Was I supposed to connect any cables up? It didn't tell me about connecting any cables at this stage. No. So, again, just nip those up. Just a touch, not too tight, but tight enough so that they're not going to loosen themselves off. That's the end of step two. Now step three uh, is install the rack. Uh, so we've got a spool holder and the spool. The material rack can be installed in different positions on the front and the back of the Z-axis and can be folded. Yeah, well, we know it can, which is very cool. So... For this, we'll go to the back. Uh, so that uh, goes in, looks like it might go both ways. Let's have a look. Hey, clever design, can go either side. That's very clever. Really good forethought. And then this just clips into the extrusion. So with a little lift it up a bit. Oh, <laughs> so nice. Uh, and as you can see, that is now supporting the reel. And we can fold it up out of the way. Or we can uh, we can bring it back in and we just grab some or um filament. There we go. Yeah, beautiful. In the words of uh, the guys from Dumb and Dumber, I like it a lot. We'll come back to that bit a bit later on. And that's that's it for step three. So we're now up to step four, installing the handle, which again is kind of strange, I guess, for me, having a handle on a printer, but I guess it kind of goes with the whole theory behind this printer, and that is that it's a... Um, uh, it's a portable printer. Uh, you can unplug it, take it to your mate's place, go and do some 3D printing, take it to mum's or whatever, and uh, when you're finished, bring it back. So the, the handle appears to be made out of like a, maybe a aluminium powder coated extrusion, uh, and seems quite sturdy. I'll just clip those two up. That was using the um, T nuts, T bolts, or bolts. Oh, yeah, it's certainly sturdy. Uh, it's easy to show up to step five now. It's easy to change platforms. Rotate the glass and place handle plate for platform replacement. Okay. So these little jiggers unlock and 
and you can slow down. Wow, that was tight. Uh, the bed, more. That's pretty satisfying. Pop that back in again. So these are actually quite tight. Uh, to a point where I don't think that glass is going to slide back under. Yeah, that's, that's really tight. Again, could be the design, but you know, it's going to require quite a bit of force to get those to slide under. Uh, Front back down, yeah, that's that's interesting. It's it's tight. It's definitely tight. Uh, they might loosen up over time, I guess. Something interesting to note as well is the, um, the use of the bed slides back and forth, obviously quite a bit. And these cables here uh, need some sort of strain relief, and this uh, is actually a really good strain relief. Uh, nice rubber. It's got a, a rubberized flexible end on it. Uh, kind of like what you'd see on a kettle or a toaster or an iron or something like that, I guess. Uh, not that I've seen too many irons in my life, but I imagine that's what they would look like. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool as well. Uh, right, oh, cable connection. So we've got a power cable, obviously. Add that to my box of stuff. Terrible throw. Uh, Connecting up all the cables and checking to see if it is 230 to 40 volts or 110 volts. So in Australia we use uh, 230 or 240 volts, and there's a little switch on the back here uh, which has 110 and two, uh, 230 volts. So we definitely want to make sure that's connected to 230 or switched to 230 rather. Uh, we've got some connectors here, and these are for the gantry and they uh, literally can only go in one way. So I'll connect both of these up. And I imagine this goes somewhere. Let's find out where that somewhere is. Ah, well again there's only one spot that it can go. Let's go with that spot. Uh, this is something that I really like as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay. And this one is going to go somewhere as well. Let's find where that somewhere is. should read the instruction manual. And again, my wife says RTFM. Uh, yeah, that was a rookie error as well. Let's get it down to where it looks like it should go, uh, which would be, of course, the extruder. Otherwise, how else is it going to heat up? Again, it should only go in one way. It does. And that's got a little clip lock mechanism on it as well, which is pretty cool. A couple of these little twist hooks, which I guess can sit anywhere, but for today, they can sit over the, the Bowden tube. Three of these. Uh, one, two, three. Now, by all accounts, minus the screen, that should be all we need to connect. I probably want to do that cable ties or something, maybe. It, to me, it doesn't look like a, a forever solution, but for today, it'll be a good solution. So, is there a cable for the screen? There is, and it's taped down to the bed, to the base, rather, with some relatively thick tape. And that should be our last connection, minus the power cable, which goes in the same side. Well, I'm telling one more lie. 
There's another cable down here. Again, it's taped down to the bed using that same, it's like a fabric tape. Wow. That is really stuck down. And it's leaving horrible residue on the, on the case as well. Uh, Creality. Use a different tape. That's left a, I'll take a photo of that later, but it's left a really sticky and gross looking residue on the, on the casing. Uh, let's connect this one up. And now let's call that, oh hang on, ready? I know some people live for this stuff. Uh, me, I don't mind it, but it's, uh, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't rate it that highly. Uh, Alright, so uh, it says we are now done. Cable connection, we're up to step seven, which is bed levelling. Uh, so we can go through uh, levelling the bed. So we've found the uh, 240 volts, and uh, let's hit the switch and see if the magic happens. I'm going to get a nice little Creality logo. So step seven says bed levelling. Select home levelling to automatically level. Okay. After the levelling is completed, adjust the Z-axis compensation value according to the adhesion of the printing consumables and the glass. Okay, so we probably need to start a print and then work our Z-level uh, up or down as required, hopefully just down a little bit. So let's do level and auto levelling. And if everything's connected correctly, I guess we should start to see the machine do its thing. saying nothing. Ah, we're seeing nothing <laughs> because it's heating up the hot end, which is really interesting that it's doing it by itself for leveling, uh, but again, kind of clever. So it's only hit the nozzle, it hasn't heated the bed. And it actually says on there, wait for the nozzle temperature to heat up to 120 and start leveling. Nowhere in the manual does it mention that we need to put the tensioner together. And uh, I could be wrong, I'll just very quickly have a look here, but it shows it, uh, that it's already together. So uh, if you happen to have these two bits, uh, make sure that they are on the gantry and we have some tension on this cable uh, because without that old mate here is not going to move so just tighten to the point where it's uh, finger tight uh, make sure that it's not crossed or twisted and that it's moving Nice and freely as well. So let's fire that up again and uh, see what happens this time. I like how quickly it boots up, that's really nice. So level, auto leveling, uh, and again we learned from the last time it says wait till it gets to 120 degrees. So we'll give it to uh, 120 degrees to uh, heat up. I like that feature, it doesn't heat the bed up, but it's heating the nozzle up. Um, with thermal expansion, it means that things get closer together um, when they're heated, and the fact that it's thought of, that they've thought about that and, and the machine does that automatically uh, will hopefully save a few dramas down the track for you when uh, you hit start on your print. So up to 108 degrees out of 120 degrees. Interesting temperature that it's chosen as the temperature to do that at. Um, generally speaking, if I'm doing it, I'm heating my hot end and my bed to the normal printing temperature that I would use. Um, and uh, there we go. Uh, I'm setting it to the temperature that I would normally be printing at. So if I'm printing PLA, for example, with 195 and um, uh, the bed temperature is at say 50 degrees, that's probably where I want to set my settings to. 
um, you may or may not want to do the same. You may or may not be able to do that in the settings here. It may just be calibrated to do it as it sits here. So we'll get this to go down and go through its 16-stage uh, bed levelling. Uh, and uh, always at this point, um, I'm ready with my left hand. Uh, you might be with your right hand, depending on which way you're facing the unit, uh, to switch it off. So if it starts to come down hard or if it's not levelling the way that I'm expecting it to, um, I want anything to break. So I'm just ready to hit that off switch um, if I need to. Not common, but you know, it's always better to be Boy Scout prepared than uh, not prepared at all. So it's doing a, I think they call this a safe home, where it uh, finds the centre of the bed. Um, it finds a, uh, a safe home and then uh, once it's done that, it should take itself off to the, um, the front raw left hand corner and hopefully uh, start finding the level of the bed. I say hopefully because it's doing nothing. It feels like it wants to do something. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. But I don't feel like I'm going to be stopping the video again and troubleshooting this one now. Because uh, she's not working. We're at 120 degrees. <coughs> Cables are tight. No, that one's not really. Oh, we might do the switch off. Switch on again. <laughs> and we'll try starting it for the third time. All our cables appear to be connected. One more. Level. Auto leveling. Last time. That nozzle does cool down very quickly. It's down to 60 degrees. It's only off for a matter of moments then. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're heading up for the third time. With all our belts nice and tight. This one's tight. This one's tight. This one's tight. Uh, one would hope that uh, it will now do safe home uh, in the centre of the bed with the Z axis and then it will go off and start doing its thing. There we go, that's uh, a little better. That was absolutely perfect. Huh. Wow. Okay, so that's um, absolutely hit its location. Yep. Well, that is, uh, as advertised, uh, really simple. <coughs> it's checking each point twice. So it's hitting the first point quickly and then slower the second time and it has 16 points of levelling across the bed. So, uh, irrespective of whether the bed is completely level or not, uh, this is going to find that, that level uh, on the bed. So getting that first layer down, which is the critical layer in, in uh, 3D printing, is to get that first layer down and get it right, um, and then everything sticks to that. From then on, uh, will be nice and level as well. Um, so get it, getting that right and using something like this technology to do that uh, every time should give us a, a perfect print you know, 10 times out of 10 hopefully, but even if we can get 8 times out of 10 or 7 times out of 10, um, if you're new to 3D printing, that's probably a pretty good ratio. Um, you will, uh, you'll probably find that uh, that's a, it's a really nice feature to have. So it's gone through, it's done the bed level, it's created a bed level mesh, so even if the bed goes like that, um, or like that, 
uh, it will compensate for it when it's moving up and down. It will move the extruder head and move it up and down. So uh, we are now bed level, um, and then we've got preheating methods, and then now it's starting to talk about the actual printer itself. Um, so we will load some filament up. I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll go in, plug in a USB, and uh, let's see what files are on the USB, and uh, hit a test print. So back in a sec. All right, so I've had a bit of a tidy up here and uh, just made sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Uh, we're going to load up some filament uh, from the team at Aura Rum. Uh, we haven't dealt with these guys before. Uh, this printer is courtesy of them. And uh, they are an Australian-made uh, printer manufacturer as well as a um, 3D filament ma manufacturer as well, based right here in Australia. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they happen to be not far from my house, which is pretty cool for me. So, I'll just feed this through. Uh, this new locking system, I don't know how to feel about it just yet, because uh, it doesn't feel like it wants to feed as cleanly or as evenly as it should. So, not just try the age-old trick of cutting on a 45, making sure the end of our filament is nice and straight. Uh, if you're not familiar with what this little jigger here is, uh, it's a filament runout sensor. Like straight away that's on. And the filament runout sensor, uh, if we run out of filament, it stops the print, allows you to load up more filament and start the print again. Um, so that's, that's a pretty cool feature. There's a lot of features in this printer which are on much more expensive printers. And that's it. So there's a little switch on the back here, which we flick, and that's it, we're done. Uh, now we're going to insert the SD card in the front, it's about here somewhere. One of those jobs that I need to come around and do. And we're in. And now we go back, back, and we're going to hit print. <laughs> and there is nothing on the card, Creality. <laughs> Can I tell you how frustrating that is? Uh, pumping up the tyres. Cool. Deflating the tyres, bad. Uh, this is the second one. The Ender 5 behind me had exactly the same issue. There is, uh, for some reason, these just they just don't work. There's there's nothing on there. I don't know what the file system is or um, when I plug it in, you can see there is absolutely nothing there. Uh, yeah, it's not a major one. I can just you know, grab the the uh, one out of this, but if I'm sitting at home, I'm wondering why is it just not working out of the box like it's supposed to. So uh, there's a micro SD which I have, uh, but of course it's no good because this has no micro SD adapter attached. So we've restarted the machine uh, with the card inserted this time after it's been into my PC and run a fix on it. Uh, I don't understand, but anyway, uh, plugged it in, switched on, and now all of a sudden we've got things that we can do. So uh, let's find a 10 by 10 by 50 uh, hit print. So there's one last thing that we've got to do, uh, which is adjust the Z stepper height. So we want to get that first layer absolutely spot on. So uh, we've got pause, stop, and then the tune button. And the tune button should give us a couple of different things. So we can uh, um, speed up the, the printing speed. Um, we can adjust the nozzle temperature up or down. So uh, again, PLA in this should be around about 200, 195, somewhere around there. Um, but if we find that, that we need to pump it up a little bit, we can do that out of here. And the same with the bed temperature. We can lift the bed temperature up or, or lower it down. But most importantly is we've got our Z offset. So uh, what we're looking for is when this print starts, um, we want to um, 
uh, adjust the Z offset just to get that nice little bit of squish on the first layer um, and uh, end up with what will hopefully be a, uh, a nice 10 by 10 cube uh, that's 50 millimetres tall. Uh, just notice here as well we've got a LED, a nice little blue LED light uh, which is kind of handy for using Octoprint or something like that um, or uh, the spaghetti detective. Um, for watching at night time to make sure that it doesn't go in, you know, into spaghetti mode. And again, if you're new to 3D printing, look forward to your first spaghetti incident. It's always fun. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's, that's a cool feature as well. So we're just going through the warm-up uh, process here. So it's going through, it's warming the, the bed up first. Uh, the bed temperature is set to 40 degrees. Um, and there's a couple of little numbers here. It tells us on the bed 38 out of 40. So it's currently sitting at 38 degrees Celsius out of 40 degrees. Once it gets to 40, then it'll uh, keep the bed at that heat, and then it'll start heating the filament. And the uh, the filament will, uh, sorry, the, the hot end, the hot end will then go up to whatever the preset is there. So in this case, it's just gone to 200. So now it says 37 out of 200. Um, the speed below that tells us that uh, we're at 100% uh, of the, the speed. So you can speed it up if it's going too slow. Uh, and understand that if you are going slowly, you're getting nice crisp edges, nice crisp corners, nice smooth, round, uh, good layer adhesion, all of those things. The faster you go, you risk losing some of those things. So you'll end up with a messier print, a failed print, uh, messier edges, not good corners, etc., etc. Um, so sometimes it's best to leave it at 100%. Play around with it, tune it um, to you know, how you'd like it to print. Uh, if you're looking for really good definition, then you want to go slowly. If you're less concerned about definition and you just want to print out face masks, for example, or, or um, mask savers, um, it doesn't really matter if they have um, you know, weird shaped corners, then you know, speed it up and, and just punch those things out for sure. Um, so we're up to 160 out of 200 now. The bed temperature is sitting at 41 out of 40, so it's just slightly above. There's tolerances for that as well, so if it goes outside of those, um, it'll stop your print. Um, and again, sitting at 182, and once it gets up to temperature, it'll just automatically start printing. And then the only thing we've got to worry about is just setting our bed offset or a Z offset, and just making sure that we've got that you know, that really nice little just the the instead of being a round circle, we just want it sort of squished at the bottom, squished at the top, just a little bit, and that'll give us the, the right amount of adhesion to the bed, uh, and hopefully see us with a um, with a perfect print. So we're at 197 now, which should be starting in a minute. And the printer will lift itself up, come back down, find wherever it's going to print, and just start doing whatever it is that, uh, that it does. Uh, so there we go. Moving up, it's homing. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm just going to pop my head down here and see what this looks like. So it's absolutely possible I may not have to change anything. And you know what? I'm going to say I don't have to change anything. So it's done a skirt around the outside. Uh, and a skirt being a really good way for, again, if you're new to this, um, it's a really good way to uh, see whether or not your print is going to start well. Um, so you really want that first layer to be really good. Like the, the better the first layer is, the better the entire print will end up. And that's just fine. I'm not even going to touch that. I'm not going to adjust it at all. It's currently set to uh, point, uh, point 0.2 on the uh, Z offset. I'm just going to let it do its thing. It is printing what looks to me to be a, a really good first layer. So a kudos on that one, Creality. I mean, out of the box, this is a beginner's printer. Like you could potentially uh, give this to anyone and just have it printing out of the box. So if you're looking for something that you can print those you know, face masks and mask savers and all of those things, um, you're going to buy yourself a roll of filament. You're going to, well, you've got one that comes with it, obviously, um, but you're going to buy yourself a roll of filament uh, and uh, you're going to be away in printing. Um, this, is, this is off and running now, so um, I can talk over this. Uh, because I um, have been told that I love the sound of my own voice. It's kind of true. Um, but rather than have you sit there and watch this happen 
uh, slowly as it is, I'll just leave it print and um, we'll come back in a minute and see what the end result looks like.
Alright, so that's just about done. It is done. Uh, the final part of the print. So I'm going to pop around the other side and uh, wait for the finish. There we go. Alright, let's see how this snaps off the bed. <laughs> Perfect. And same with the leftover filament. And so this is a 0.2 layer height. And uh, I'm just going to bring this in for a little a bit of a close up. And uh, I use translucent filament. It's actually going in dark filament, this one, from uh, Aura. But um, that looks, <laughs> looks pretty bloody good, to be honest. 10 by 10 cube. And uh, just the right amount of squish on the base. It hasn't got a lot of what they call elephant's foot. Uh, there's a little bit there, but only very, very slightly. Um, I would say that is a perfect print. So while we're doing that, we might hit finish print. We'll do print. Let's do a uh, boat. Hopefully it's a benchy. Hit print and let that do its thing. Um, so you can hear as well just how quiet that uh, this printer is. Something else that's interesting, just for, for testing. <laughs> so this is a 10 by 10 cube. Um, let's see if we can see that. That's no, 10 by 9.76. So the tolerance is there quite good. And it was by 50. 50.19. So uh, in terms of uh, doing what it says on the box, um, that's a pretty good example of that. So while we're talking, this is warming up and uh, starting another print. Uh, it's printing quite a bit higher, this one. So the bed temperature on this one is 60 degrees. Um, so I just want to give you my final thoughts on this. And uh, am I a, a love it or a leave it on this particular printer? Um, honestly, I'm a, I'm a pretty big love it. Uh, I've got a printer now that I can recommend to friends and family that out of the box... Uh, with uh, some relatively simple instructions, uh, you can have a 3D printer up and running. Um, and that is not something that I've been confident to be able to do before. The uh, fact that it's basically four bolts, six if you include up here, um, all of the tools that you need to put this together are included in the box. Uh, everything that you will need to continue printing with it is in the box including the filament. Um, it's well packaged. It's a really good build size uh, in terms of the plate size uh, and, and the height. It is, uh, it's a good solid beginner's printer. Um, and look, and even for the more experienced, if you want something you can put in your print farm and just have it bang print out all day long and not have to worry about leveling the bed or whatever, this thing is absolutely nuts. Um, it's uh, it's, a, it's a great printer. It really is. There's a couple of things that I didn't like about it, and for the first time, I'm going to say, yeah, manual sucks a bit, Creality. Um, it's not comprehensive enough. It needs a couple of things put into it. So, I mean, the fact that I could work out, well, okay, this was loose. Why was it loose? Because this wasn't installed properly. Um, the tensioner, um, you know, that should be in the manual. Sure, you know, you can read it and figure it out, but people should be able to pull that out of the box and either have it in the manual or... Um, it should be pre-installed, that way you don't have to worry about it. Um, same thing down here, no mention about tensioning this belt up. So for the average user who's just pulling their 3D printer out of the box for the very first time, um, there's a couple of things you need to, uh, you need to work on and, and one is telling people or showing people how to connect. Now these videos will obviously do that for you, but uh, it should be in the manual and you guys usually write a good manual. So uh, that I would say is, uh, is a bit of a negative. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm really struggling to find anything I don't like about it. I love how quiet it is. Uh, I love how quickly that I was able to get up and running and, and build that print. Um, that was that was amazingly fast. Um, and to you know, again, just be able to pull it out of the box, whack your filament in, and uh, be away in printing um, is it, it, honestly, it's um, not something that I've really experienced in the past. There's always some tweaks you need to do, some things you need to do, some things you have to learn. 
Um, but it would turn out that with, uh, with this, maybe there is nothing you need to learn about 3D printing at all. Maybe this is the, the first printer where you can just pull it out of the box, um, put, some filament, put a couple of screws in it, put the filament in it, and you're away in printing. And uh, if that's the case, and uh, you, you're new to 3D printing, this is probably the printer that you're going to want to buy. Uh, if you backed it in the Kickstarter, be thankful for the fact that you, you did back it in the Kickstarter because it is a it's a good unit. Um, the touch screen's good. Everything about it just feels it feels pretty quality to be honest. Um, and uh, if I was going to have this in my own house, which I would, um, I, I would be pretty happy to own it. I'd be happy to recommend it. And I think that anyone who owns one of these is um, is going to be pretty happy with it long term. Uh, so this is the the boat that it's starting now, and it's doing a purge line down the side just to clear out any of the filament that was in there, and then it's going to start the, uh, whatever the boat is, and again, I didn't look to see, uh, but again, we've started, oh, it looks like it's going to be a bench sheet, I haven't touched it, and it is laying down an amazing first layer, so well done Creality, a uh, good unit, like it a lot, and um, hopefully you sell stacks of them, because it's a good unit, and you deserve to.